My girlfriend was wearing a basque and suspenders, long legged boots and a fur coat. That's it. Oh, and a pair of lacy knickers. Because she wasn't going to fit into any cliche, especially the fur coat one. <laughs> I was wearing tight checked trousers, a white ruffle shirt, bow tie and tails. We thought we'd cut a dash. Most people just thought our heads were cut. Sure, it was a sight you might see any night in a big city and nobody would bat an eyelid. But this was Belfast. And this was 1977. We had just made our way through the ring of steel security. After searching our bags and bodies, the British Army allowed us through to our city centre, but not without a fair amount of suspicion in their eyes. What were two women doing going into the city centre at nine o'clock at night? And on their own? Back in those days, it was a rare creature that ventured into this area at night, not just because of the danger, but also nothing was open. But we had no choice if we wanted to socialize. That was the only place to go, to the one gay club, the Chariot Rooms. I was 17 years old and bursting with life, having just moved to, Be to Belfast from rural, very, very rural county down. She was called Jess, a sophisticated older woman from London. At last, I was living my own life the way I wanted to, and it was great. I was full of youth, optimism, and hormones. <laughs> we were in love, and we didn't care who noticed. We were walking on an expanse of waste land and suddenly it felt very silent and eerie. Then, out of the darkness behind us, we could hear something like chanting, like football supporters. But it wasn't that. It was a group of about nine or ten skinheads and they were shouting at us. Oi, lazy bitches! We fucking sort you out! Instinct kicked in. We took to our heels and we ran as fast as we could run for our lives. Terrified, we tripped and stumbled over the stony rough ground. They were coming after us, hard and heavy. There was no one else around. Just them and us. Their voices got louder. Something smacked Jess on the side of her head. It was a broken bottle. We were in big trouble. Fear flooded through my body. Unexpectedly, my farming upbringing flashed into my mind with the thought, I'm not scared of groups of big animals like bulls and horses. Why would I be scared of a pack of skinny gets with their flared trousers halfway up their legs and their big shiny DM boots? <laughs> Though on reflection, <laughs> yeah, maybe there were a couple of things I should have been scared of. But like the confident, deluded Egypt that I was, I stopped, I bent down, and I picked up a brick. With my brick held high in the air, I turned and ran at them. Goldering at the top of my lungs. Who the fuck do you think you are? Fuck away off! <laughs> Jess was literally shaking with fear and shouted at me, Stop! Are you mad? They'll kill you! But I heard nothing. They had hurt her with a broken bottle and that had triggered some sort of red mist. I was having none of it. These bastards were going to pay. Now, I didn't have what you would call street smarts. I'd never done any self-defense or anything. The closest I'd ever come to a fight 
was the odd squealing match with my wee sister. I hadn't really thought this through. And I had no clue what to expect. I was not prepared for this situation. Fortunately, neither were they. <laughs> they took one look at this big wild lesbian with a brick in her hand coming full pelt towards them and they froze, turned round and ran like blazes out of there. <laughs> the element of surprise just floored them. They never dreamt that we would do anything except run and give them the thrill of the chase. We were never so glad to see the light coming from the chariot rooms pouring out onto the dark street. We were sealed. A few drinks and a couple of hours into the evening and the music was pulsing and throbbing through our bodies. It was dark. We were dancing crotch to crotch. The air was a heady mix of alcohol, smoke, poppers and sex. We had forgotten all about the gang of thugs who threatened us earlier. Suddenly the music stopped, big bright lights were switched on. It was halfway through the evening, this wasn't going home time. There was a collective sigh of recognition about what was just going to happen. People went silent, most just bowed their heads in resignation. Suddenly, we looked like a scared, pitiful bunch. All that exuberant confidence that came with the freedom to be ourselves seemed to be replaced with fear and shame. This was the time for the regular visit by either the RUC or the British Army to come in and enter the dance floor. But this wasn't a full Monty moment. This was serious. They were heavily armed for warfare. One by one, with their hands on their big rifles, they walked up to each of us. They stared us up and down. Now at 17, I was one of the youngest people there and I was very much out and proud. But this wasn't my city and I had the added courage of anonymity. There were many older Belfast people who really did fear being outed and for good reason. They risked rejection from their family and their friends, hostility and shunning from their community. They could easily have lost their jobs. A big burly RUC man was standing very close and staring into my eyes. I said, you know, there's no need for all these big bright lights and carry on. You could just come in here like anybody else if you want to get yourself a boyfriend. <laughs> Just, <coughs> pardon me. He just glared at me, seething, as if everything in him wanted to yell, fucking lazy bitches, come here and I'll sort you out. They were the official, lawful thugs. Not quite like the unlawful ones we'd encountered previously that evening, the ones who ran away scared before being able to look me square in the eye. Oh, but then they didn't have semi-automatic rifles, revolvers, and the state approved right to intimidate at will. When they had had their car trip, their fill and thrill of fags and dykes, they left the building. They wanted us to be scared, to hang our heads in shame, to go back home to our pathetic, closeted little lives. Do you think we did that? 
<laughs> no. The lights were dimmed right down. The music started up louder than ever, beating and pulsing through our veins, and we were dancing again in sheer defiance. And nobody, nobody was ever going to stop us. <laughs>